Yeah, I mean, this is another thing that's been having me spin mad for one. We've covered on this show and that's been, you know, like it's so annoying, Matt. Like, you know, we've been doing um, our, our, our shorter videos, like our TikToks and stuff like that, which is great because you get to reach a bigger audience. And I, I'll say I usually try to ignore comments, but like the stuff we get on those sometimes really infuriates me because all these right wingers now will basically say like, oh, y'all are just mad because, uh, you know, Musk bought Twitter. And like one, like that's actually something like in the relative scheme of things, like I care the least about. And first of all, th- yeah, no, let's dwell on that okay. one. I kind of always wanted him to because I feel like it puts his entire shit at risk. So like I, I want him to fail. I don't think he's going to succeed. This idea that there's all his little venture capital guys, which like, that's so funny. These, these things be like, you're just mad. Like, no, you're a cuck for venture capitalists. Yeah. Like all Jason Calacanis and all these different dweebs um, that were pushing NFTs a, a few days ago saying like, oh, isn't it weird how the website still loads? Like, okay, well fucking done. Well, how's mm-hmm. your revenue at? Right. Is that part of the business? Like no, they're, I mean, they're, they're completely like, that's completely fucked up. That's a lot of the, the, the um, stuff that they trim. So like I, I it was never someone, to, this is one of the things him getting involved in this shit. Like I wish it, I just wish he was more involved in Twitter and less involved in putting implants into monkey brains and having racist car factories <laughs> and fucking up Texas with rockets. Yeah. Um, you know, and like that, well, that's what I was going to say is like, what pisses me off about, about those comments in particular is like, you got to give me a little bit more credit. I've been a Musk <laughs> hater for a long time. Um, and again, <clears throat> because of the shit that he does, um, like, again, I, I care much less about the the public persona and the stupid things he says <clears throat> in interviews and on Twitter. Um, yeah. I care about what the effect of having somebody like that have access to tremendous amounts of power and be able to basically buy governments and do what he likes. And so, you know, to, to, to add to another chapter of our, uh, you know, Musk reporting, um, I first want to refresh people on, on something that's happened in South Texas. Remember, he came here not because um, he loves Texas or thinks the culture is cool. He came here because he thought he could get away with shit. And for the most part, um, our government here has been basically proving them right. Um, Whether or not it's been from place, you know, from my hometown of of Austin and and Travis County, giving him tremendous amounts of money for his gigafactory where he wasn't paying his workers, was putting them in extremely dangerous positions. Um, To what's been happening in South Texas um, with his uh, spaceship launching facilities. And uh, we had a couple months ago on the show last year um, about a year ago actually uh, Becca Hinosa um, on the program um, who was arrested held in prison um, and they didn't even tell her what she was being charged with pulled out of her home in the early hours of the morning they refused to give her her glasses um, were basically threatening her um, alleging that she might have put up some anti Elon Musk graffiti on a publicly owned wall Right. And again, whatever, you know, <laughs> the, the, the truth of, of those charges, like the way that the state jumps in there and tries to threaten and harass somebody should send chills down anybody's spine. Um, and it's been very clear that since Musk has shown interest in that region, that the governments there have been willing to basically let him do whatever he wants. And in this case, literally using the full force of like the, the state apparatus, right? The police uh, to threaten people who are criticizing him. Yeah, I mean, um, you can be damn sure that when SpaceX does something that like causes some sort of environmental damage, uh, the mayor is not going to be uh, calling him out on Facebook the next day. Okay. No, yeah. And so I just want to remind folks, we'll have a link in the show description, um, you know, to one, if you haven't seen that interview, go and check out, out our interview with Becca Hinosa. Um, and two, um, if you can speak um, specifically, um, anybody's welcome to, but it means even more if you are from Texas or from the region, um, to sign this petition, tell the city council of Brownsville to drop the charges against Becca Hinosa and investigate mayor Mendez for abuse of power. Um, which I think is a very, very reasonable, um, claim, um, and request, but we wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that have been happening, um, down in that part of the state, because it's truly brutal. And, you know, for people who aren't familiar with, with, with that region, I mean, like the, the fact is, is like what the mayor did is disgusting. What Musk is doing is disgusting, but why are they able to do it? It's because these are parts of the state that have been purposefully, um, they, there's been a lack of investment. So when Musk comes in and he promises that he's going to put money into the school or whatever, you know, it becomes very attractive. 
um, for local governments to basically shut up and let him do whatever he wants. And you see that dynamic play all, all across the country, which again is why as um, you know, as, as socialists, like we make this argument that these questions about inequality aren't just about, oh, some people have more and some people have less. It's literally about how much power do you want to have have one individual individual to have over the rest of the community? And in these examples, it's very, very clear that this person is basically being able to push around the local residents, the people who make up the body politic, right, the dem democratic society, basically be able to impose his will on them because, not because he has great arguments, good intentions, or even particular interest in that part of the, the state. Um, it's because he's got a lot of money. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've covered a lot what's been happening with SpaceX and the environment. I just want to remind folks, um, this is from, um, from Unita's uh, RGV, um, who put together some, some photographs of the devastations that have happened from previous rocket launches um, at the SpaceX facility. And I'll just make it a little bit larger for folks. Um, here's a video. Just clear it out, Lamp. Land that's incredibly important and special to people. I mean, just real destruction. And we'll get into um, some of the sacred nature um, of, of that land in just a moment. But just want to remind folks, it's like, this is who's becoming the steward of that part of the state. Um, and, you know, Musk put on a big charm offensive. And before we get to the main story, um, I also just wanted to note that, like, there's been a lot of people who have had second thoughts about this. This is from Texas Monthly, um, just from a couple days ago. Um, you know, and again, like Texas Monthly, a great magazine. I subscribe to it, but you know, this isn't like a lefty rag, right? This is like a mm -hmm. general interest slash politics history publication for the state of Texas. And this is uh, what they were writing about um, earlier this week. An author believed Elon Musk would benefit Brownsville. Not anymore. National Book Award finalist Domingo Martinez was optimistic about Musk and SpaceX in 2016. Now he says it feels like we sold our souls. Um. And uh, it goes on to enter the, the piece goes on the interview, uh, Domingo Martinez, who says, uh, when I first heard that SpaceX was considering Brownsville versus Florida, I was rooting for Brownsville. At the time, SpaceX was promising to revolutionize extraterrestrial ter science. Its CEO, Elon Musk, was on a charm offensive. And we all fell for it, Martinez says. The true cost of SpaceX's move to Brownsville was not yet known. Martinez read the Federal Aviation Administration's environmental impact statement while writing Countdown to Liftoff. But he says that despite the document's hundreds of pages of research, appendices, and comments, it fell short of predicting the full effect of launch failures would have on the area. There had been no noise. No, there had there has been noise pollution that scares away the migratory birds that attract bird watching, winter tourists from all over Texas and beyond. The scattering of debris from equipment exp and from equipment explosions and fuel drops in the Gulf of Mexico. Martinez says that Brownsville residents expected there to be some environmental impacts, but few expected it to be so immediate. Mm. Looking back at countdown to liftoff, Martinez says he regrets giving SpaceX the benefit of the doubt back then. Quote, it feels like we sold our souls. He especially laments the loss of his once pristine patch of paradise. Future generations aren't going to experience the freedom of being alone on Boca Chica. Gone per perhaps are the days of driving to the beach in a pickup truck full of beer, wood, and meat. That was a great weekend, Martinez says. I'm afraid with the introduction of SpaceX, that's not going to be possible for very much longer. And, you know, th there are so many different facets of the... Um, the fallout and, and the consequences of SpaceX being there. And, you know, one, um, I think it's really critical to remember that very much like a lot of these kind of um, development promises that come into a community to say, we're going to come here, we're going to bring economic development, we're going to bring jobs, um, you know, people in areas that need jobs, that need investment, mm -hmm. that need these things are understandably might be attracted to that kind of thing, right? We need investment. We need investment in communities like Brownsville, right? We need investments in, in lots of South Texas. We need investment all across this country. But the fact is, is that when these companies come in there, they don't do investment and uplifting of the people around there. They bring in outside hires. They bring in people from wealthy parts of the country to come and live in parts of the country where, you know, the, the general population is not doing very well. And, uh, you know, all the promises, the sparkling promises that Musk made have fallen flat. 
you know, the thing is like, you, we make fun of Musk a lot for like the bullshit when he promises stuff with his cars, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or the robot um, that they were supposed to build that never materialized. And that's funny. But he does the exact same shit when it comes to local governments across the across the country. Um, from things like this to like his boring company, like there are needs to build transportation solutions in a lot of parts of the country. He'll come to yeah. a, a municipality or a city and say, I can do it much cheaper than the the um, the competition, so give us a contract. And if you've seen with the boring company, every single one of those contracts has failed, right? The only one existing is the, the goofiest, uh, most dystopian loop in Las Vegas, which has become, you know, a punchline at this point. But, the, you know, the, the point is that, like, Musk comes in these communities, he promises a lot, and he just doesn't deliver. And luckily, there's been um, pushback and people in the communities are w demanding more. Um, but th for the most part, these demands are falling on ears that don't want to hear th their, their criticisms. And I wanted to talk a little bit about another dynamic that's sort of um, come to light in the past <clears throat> few weeks, which has been Musk's relationship with the indigenous people of South Texas. Um so Musk's um, over the weekend, um, last weekend, there was a big protest outside of the SpaceX facility um, with many members of the, uh, the local community and also members of the Carrizo uh, Kamekrudo tribe, um, which is an indigenous tribe to that region of, of Texas, um, demanding that they get to have a fucking meeting with Elon Musk, right? The community legend himself has refused to meet. Um, or listen to the community concerns or the indigenous people's concerns as to what his, his moving there and what his company's activities have meant um, for folks um, in, in, in that community. Um, and this is from a piece um, in, in Yes Magazine um, entitled uh, Defending Native Sacred Sites. Hold on. Uh, Defending Native Sacred Sites from Elon Musk and SpaceX. And the thing is, is that you know, th this land is very special to a lot of people on an emotional level, on a cultural level, on a historical level. Um, but for the indigenous people, this also holds very important spiritual sites, burial grounds, um, places where people come to, you know, to, to do ceremony and to be connected to their culture and their history. And Musk is basically um, not only are people regularly refuse entry to their historic and important spiritual um, land, um, they're also burning it. Like they're fucking blowing shit up and um, <laughs> causing causing fires and just untold destruction to a part of the state that has tremendous amounts of historic and important spiritual um, wealth um, for for the Carrizo uh, Kamakrudo tribe. Um, and this is from this piece here. Um, I don't think they understand what a sacred site is because they have no connection to anything that's sacred to their lives, says mm -hmm. Juan Mencias, chair of the Carrizo um, Comacrudo tribe of Texas. Um, but going down a little bit further in the piece, um, it says, but what concerns Mencias most is the planned expansion of the launch center um, and the possible destruction of ancient village sites and the artifacts and human remains they contain. The launch center was originally designed to handle smaller rockets, such as the SpaceX Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy vehicles. But the company is switching to the much larger Super Heavy and Starship rockets that will eventually place thousands of Starlink inter, um, internet satellites into low Earth orbit. The company plans to launch up to one rocket a week um, starting next year, requiring a large support facility and additional launch pads. So, you know, even what was promised, you know, in the positive side hasn't materialized. And then what w people were giving up potentially, um, they're expanding on. They're taking more than what they ask for. Um, and, and the worry is if you've seen the destruction from these smaller r launches, what these larger scale rockets are going to mean um, for the community in general. And uh, unless you had anything to add, I have this clip from the, the protest over the weekend. Because over the weekend, 47 lawmakers from the state of Texas went down uh, to meet with Musk and um, managers of the facility and uh, members of the uh, uh, Carrizo uh, Comicrudo tribe and members of the, the larger community were out there to say, can you fucking have a conversation with us? Can you listen to our concerns and our demands and treat us as, you know, residents of this place, people who have deep ties to this land, unlike you who've just come here and you know, plopped millions of dollars in, in, into this area and act like you get to own an entire region. Um, but here's, here's some of the clip.
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it reminds me an awful lot of the Dakota Access Pipeline stuff, which mm-hmm. uh, if folks don't remember, uh, oil pipeline, you don't want to run that across the Missouri north of Bismarck, all the people like, you know, people, my folks, white folks there. So run that south of town, just north of uh, Standing Rock Sioux Reservation. Um, I mean, it, it's the, the like you said, like the it, sacredness, like versus people willing to make a fucking deal and mm-hmm. immiserated to the point where it's like, Oh, well I, on, I, on the one hand, I do value this, the surroundings that I grew up in. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I fucking needs material <laughs> support. I don't know how I'm going to retire. I don't know this or that. And it makes people just grasping mm-hmm. and willing to make just I, again, like, I don't know what more profound, bargain you can make then i may have a little bit of material security here and this is the land i was born into and like indigenous folks of course feel it a lot more deeper than Mm -hmm. folks who are there because of in my case in mandan that's where the rail that's where the rail was crossing the river Mm -hmm. um uh, you know like their their life patterns are much more uh um, profound than that but at the same but nonetheless like it's it's a type of it, it's it, it's pathetic in like the Greek sense of that term like like to see this happen and to see people like and I thank for that guy for like coming with that story because I think that is powerful for people to see mm-hmm. like I was there I was there to make the bargain and now like what have we done I, it's just super depressing because you know it, it can't happen fast enough. And, and again, uh, you know, there's, there's so many is multifaceted and like, you know, similar fights, by the way, you know, like this is one thing that's really brutal about, um, you know, you think about like the border wall too. It's like, this is something that's separated communities that have been connected, you know, forever. Um, and, and, and yeah, and, and, and the way these, these things affect like many different people, but they affect people, um, in, in, in different ways and to different levels of, of severity. I want to make sure that I read um, the letter that they <clears throat> were delivering to the 47 senators here. Um, to the Texas senators and representatives touring SpaceX, we request a meeting and tour with you to discuss our concerns with SpaceX construction and operations in our Rio Grande Valley community. Um, it is unfair and unjust that our state representatives and senators are meeting with SpaceX staff and ignoring the community members negatively impacted by the private space industry. For years, SpaceX activities have destroyed the pristine Lower Rio Grande Valley uh, refuge habitats and lands sacred to the Carrizo uh, Comicrudo tribe of Texas, including ancestral village sites um, and bur- burials. The growth of SpaceX operations has also displaced locals from their homes, prevented families from accessing Boca Chica Beach to fish and recreate, and caused housing prices to skyrocket to our low-income community. We are requesting to discuss these issues. Please contact us to set up a meeting and tour with impacted community members. Thank you, Juan B. Mencias, Chairman of Carrizo uh, Come Crudo Tribe of Texas. And that's another thing too, like again, like if you want like more information, you can um, go and check out our interview with Becca Hinoso. But like one aspect of this too, that's like really devastating is that they're shutting down entire regions of of, of the area, particularly in the Boca Chica, whenever they want to do a launch. And what that means is literally the police will come to your house and say, Hey, you can't leave um, for the weekend. If you want, we'll, they'll put you up in like a, you know, a mid range hotel, um, you know, and then, then maybe you come back on Monday. People who like own their homes are being told that they don't even have access to that anymore. I mean, that's how extreme, um, you know, th- this fight is. And like, look, <laughs> In, in, in Texas, it's crazy to me to have a conversation about private property where basically a rich guy can, uh, you know, tell folks that they, you know, they're not able to access their homes for a period of time, right? It's like, it's truly exceptional um, <laughs> anywhere, but like- If ever there was time for- well, yeah, I, if ever there was a time for castle doctrine, I would yeah, say it's exactly. when a rich guy's <laughs> um, You know, but people, you know, the people, yeah, they aren't able to access their homes. People aren't able to access, you know, public lands. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's truly incredible how much they're willing to bend over backwards um, for this for, for this person. And, you know, how flippantly uh, Musk is not a steward of the land or a steward of the community by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but should we get to the other thing that's going to get us fucking super hot, Matt? So on the original tweet and also shout out, the original video came from um, another Gulf is possible. 
Um, I discovered this and I will say I've, <laughs> I've had a hard time reacting to it because it, it fills me with a certain kind of range, uh, rage. Um, with, this is the original tweet with the video and uh, this fellow here, Austin Barnard, um, responds, bunch of NPCs. And if folks aren't familiar um, with what that terminology means, it means non-playable uh, characters, which again is extremely nerdy um, terminology. It shows you a little bit about where these people's minds are at. Um, but two, um, it's basically, it's denying people's humanity, right? It's saying that they aren't actors, right? They, they're not capable of, you know, participating in society, participating in the world, right? And the game reference would be like, they, they don't, you know, they're, they're, they're scripted, right? They're, they're completely controlled. Um, I mean, an incredibly dehumanizing thing to say about anybody, but I think exceptionally knowing the history of this country, knowing the history of this state and the indigenous people here, I mean, it's the height of nastiness. And look, I don't usually bring up random Twitter people that piss me off, but it's a SpaceX boy, um, a SpaceX employee over here. Um, that's how that's their front facing uh, look when people are saying, hey, it'd be mighty fine if you know you folks could listen to us and hear some of our concerns. I mean, that's the mentality of, of, of these people, right? Yeah. Um, incredible dehumanization um, along with just destruction of people's communities, the destruction of the land and the, a, a sense that like, you know, they're, they're above these people. I mean, it, 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 it's truly something that should make you see red. Yeah. To explain the NPC thing for folks, that means it's, it's gamer speak, which is just yeah. to know where we are for non-playable character. Uh, basically like a computerized character in a video game. So that's how like this sort of dweeb ass uh, SpaceX nerd um, feels about you. Yeah. And you know, here's the thing is Musk is banking on a couple of things. He's banking on the fact that politicians in Texas don't care about Texans, right? Pretty good bet for being honest. He's also banking on the fact that a lot of the country forgets about South Texas. Most of the country forgets about South Texas. Most Texans forget about South Texas. It's desperately important. It's, it's critically important that people don't let them get away with this bullshit. Don't let them get away with this idea that they just went into the middle of the desert far away from civilization to do their little science experiments. Um, and, you know, that nothing could be further from the truth. That is a part of the state that is actually historically um, has like some of the longest lasting communities that have been there. Like South Texas, that part of, of, of the state, that's where people have been for a long, long, long time. Um, you know, so to come in here to act like he's acting is absolutely disgusting. It has real questions for democracy. Um, it has real questions for for politics, for economics. Um, but there's also just basic human questions about: Do we want our lives dictated by a solo billionaire um, who thinks that he's above the law, he's above society, he's above community, um, or do we want to live in a world where us as a communities are able to make decisions about what's happening to yeah. the land around us? Um, and th it couldn't be as, as simple. It, it couldn't be put simpler than that. You know, on that front, like the whole um, let's go to Mars yeah. thing, I honestly think, and, and it's not something that I've always been immune to throughout my life, but I think it speaks to a certain type of antisocial sickness of the heart. Oh, absolutely. That you are willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. locations that have sacred meaning to people here on Earth and a history for a place <laughs> with none of that yeah no, there's no, there's no paris on uh, mars there's no yeah. there's no shit it's going to be and it's going to be bleak f uh, for generations mm -hmm. if we could ever do it like and we can't do it soon you will not see it mm -hmm. uh and like that's what i uh, when people say like oh like, i remember thinking listen watch like a neil degrasse tyson podcast be like if you could go to mars like well what if it meant you could only come back like once every like 20 years or something like that. I was like, I'll, I'll stay here. Yeah. Right. I'll stay here and travel. Like to, I'll, I'll, I'll see New Zealand mm -hmm. um, and like where there's actual shit to do there and like animals and stuff. Like, I, I think like people are people you're very, I think you're, it's, it's a, it's, it's antisocial. It's, it's really like mom's basement style in the worst possible way, which is no shame to people who live back. But like you haven't graduated into the real world. Mm. Uh, uh, if you think like a space colony is like, that's, that's not, there's no, there's nobody there literally. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, like it, I know totally like, look, I'm all for, you know, a, a future, 
of space travel and, and, you know, and for, you know, exploring that and, and, and building that up. But like, that's not what's happening here. I mean, this is yeah. a plaything of an incredibly rich person who's making good money um, mm-hmm. from this shit too. Um, and of course, like the irony is not lost on me that, that Musk sort of is, put a halo on his head over the electric vehicle thing and just destroy, literally exactly. destroying the environment in, in South Texas. Um, yeah. But again, folks, there's a link below to go sign that petition um, in support of Becca Hinosa. Um, that's something that I think is really important. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll certainly be covering this as much as, as, as possible. 